Hey there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jody. If you are new here, I'd love it if you would stick around. Um, and we're gonna do a quick garden update. I think this is number 17. Um, not a whole lot to do today. I just wanna show you the growth over the last uh, you know, week or week and a half, I think it's been since I've been down here with the camera. So yeah, I think I'll take you around the garden and give you an update on all of the little plants that I've been trying to grow and we'll give everything a good water. I did bring down some rope um, to tie around the sticks for the beans and my volunteer peas. So we'll take a minute to look at that. And I don't know if I'll have the energy today, <laughs> but um, last time I had my peas growing up on sticks and I think just the stick wasn't enough support for them and they ended up like getting white flies and mildew. So I think this time if I have rope going across, they'll have something to really grip onto and spread out a little bit so they won't mildew. But yeah, uh, without further ado, let's go give everybody a quick once over. Okay, I think we should start at the cabbages. I've been really having uh, a big aphid problem. They ate out the entire center of this cabbage. And like you can see in the bottom, mm, let's see if I can get that to focus. See all that? like black stuff. That's all aphid poo. <laughs> um, so I've been really soaking these in neem oil. It seems to help. So I don't think we're going to get a cabbage out of this one anymore. This one just struggled from the get-go and so did this one. My, my middle cabbages pulled classic middle child syndrome. And refused to mature. But yeah, see all that black at the base of the leaves? That's all aphid poo. Um, this particular cabbage was especially infested, like you can see. So I sprayed this until it was sopping wet and I don't see any aphids, so that's great news. Um, but yeah, you can see the heart of the cabbage is still there, so I might actually get a cabbage out of this one. This one too, look at the damage. See that? Aphid damage. But it looks like they moved out. Good. Okay, good. I was so frustrated the other day, I didn't film it, but... So frustrated and my little cabbage is forming in there. He's nice and solid still, so that's good news. Uh, yeah, so I think I'm only gonna get three cabbages, if that, because this guy as well isn't really coming in onto himself anymore. Let's see, see those? They all got aphid munched. Well, that's all right. So we're doing okay on the aphid front on these. Um, there's nothing going on right here at the moment. The onions and rosemary are doing great. The corn is getting taller by the day. Um, these are yellow squash and they've grown their third leaves. Uh, my bush beans are getting taller. You know, <laughs> these first leaves that come off of beans, they feel kind of sticky like Velcro. And <laughs> when I was growing them at the school with the kids, like after we would harvest the beans, we would take the leaves before we composted the plants after they'd produced enough, and we'd turn them into stickers and stick them all over each other. It was super fun. But anyway, so those are the bush beans. They're looking really good. They got their second set of leaves coming up. Uh, let's see, my zucchinis are looking great. Oh, look at that beautiful oval leaf. Love, love, love. My volunteer sweet peas are laying down and that's why I kind of want to get the strings going for them. So I don't want them to, oh yeah, see he's shriveling up. I need to get them wrapped up around something. Oh no, but his little neck broke. Yeah, I don't think he's gonna make it. Oh well. Happens. They were volunteers anyhow. 
these are my string beans and um, I kind of put these sticks in there but I think I need to relocate them I think I'm gonna put like them like that instead next to oh gosh now my neighbor leather faces out I swear I can't film anything around here okay anyway uh, my broccolis are still rocking. My pepper plant, he's looking a little wilty. It was hot today. I'm gonna give everything a water. My radishes too look like they all got sunburnt. Look, sunburned. Um, tomato plant is still rocking its tomato. <gasps> We're gonna have another baby tomato. Oh my God, I might get two whole tomatoes this year, you guys. That's rather exciting for me. Yay! So I'll get two tomatoes. <laughs> so I wonder if, how many of these flowers are female and if I'll get more. I might need to put a support in for my tomato too. Uh, so shirts, bouncy and healthy. No idea what these flowers are. They were a gift and they came back with a vengeance. Something knocked over my carrot. I would bet my life it's the squirrel. Oh, so sad. So, see that? Yeah, so I think what I'll do is I think I'll readjust these get these guys up on a stick and a string too a little trellis and then I'm gonna water and that's it for the day I forgot to get something to cut the string with. I'll be back. Okay, scissors. I brought down some pieces of like twist tie garden wire and the rope.
show you what I did. I gave strings to each of the sweet peas that had popped up. I don't think that one's gonna make it, but I gave him a chance anyway. This one I gave him a string. So put one across these two sticks so they can grow up and hopefully across. And then since these are, I can't remember if I put bush beans or green beans. I think these are just green beans. Um, they will start sending out their little tendrils soon. So I'm hoping it'll grip onto there and eventually up here. And uh, yeah, that's my little contraption. We'll see how it goes. I try to garden with what I have on hand instead of buying all the accessories because it can be an expensive hobby. Um, I watered really deeply. It's been so hot. You want to make sure that the water is penetrating all the way down. So it's nice and wet all the way down. Um, <laughs> muddy hands. But yeah, hopefully that'll work. There are still potatoes in here. Whether or not they're going to sprout again, I don't know. We'll find out. But yeah, they say to water corn really deeply. It's a thirsty plant. So I did. And that's all we're going to do today. Okay, so that's all we're gonna do today. Thank you for tagging along with me. Um, excuse my very tired appearance. <laughs> I am currently on the hunt for a new job and I had an interview yesterday for a local company and um, it went really well and I'm really hoping to hear back from them. We'll see how it goes. It's very odd making this transition and um, if this is the first of my videos you've watched, then you wouldn't know that um, for the past four years I've been a preschool teacher in uh, the city closest to where I live. And while it was a fantastic job and I loved everyone I worked with and the kids were like the freaking best, um, I hit burnout really, really bad through the pandemic. Um, and I'm just now coming out of that and like healing that part of my heart and myself. <laughs> I had a lot go on like since the end of 2019, it's been nonstop. So yeah, it's just been a super strange time for everybody, including myself. And I couldn't hang in there anymore as a teacher. And I feel like a lot of teachers are feeling that way. So I'm trying to take a step outside of teaching and move over into more of an administrative role or um, something along those lines. I do have other skill sets. So anyway, it was just weird interviewing again after four years of like knowing I had a place where I enjoyed being and working and I kind of felt like I belonged and I built this beautiful network of connections and then changing careers is always scary you kind of have to bet on yourself and um i think a lot of people my age in their 30s us millennials are realizing at this point in our lives that there is no break like there isn't going to be a you know everyone says oh, i just need to catch a break well there's no break coming and we need to really trust ourselves so I think that's where I'm at. I'm working on trusting myself and trusting that it's all gonna work out and knowing in my heart of hearts that I need a break from teaching and I can be effective in other areas with other skill sets. Um, in a perfect world, you know, we wouldn't have to work, <laughs> but that's just not an option, even as it feels like the world is crumbling around us. So, Anyway, I know I'm not alone in these feelings and if you feel similarly and you're learning and growing and expanding your skills and investing in yourself and in your home and making that your sacred space and the more sustainable space for your life, then we're in the same boat. Um, I create a lot of art to cope and of course I'm learning the new skill of gardening and so far it's it's been a skill to learn i've had a lot of failures but you know that's okay 
So it's a weird confidence when you allow yourself the space to fail at any skill. You start getting more and more confident because you're like, oh yeah, well, I failed at that, but then I figured out a new way of doing it or I'll try again and I'll try this way. So it's all just an experiment. Um, yeah, I just want to share that if you're, if you're dealing with that yourself and you're allowing yourself this room to fail and grow and try again, you can actually apply that skill. It's actually failing is a skill, <laughs> so you can apply that anywhere. Those are just my thoughts for the week. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day, night, afternoon, evening, morning, whatever and whenever and whoever you are. I'll see you soon. Bye. Beautiful butterfly.